Hi, have you ever seen yourself naked in your dream? Or has someone ever told you that they had a dream about you and you were naked in that dream? Anyone? Now, I'd like to go through the meaning of nakedness when it comes to dreams. Is that okay? Because I'm sure some of you have seen this in your dream maybe more than once. Amen? And it's very important that you understand, you know, what it means. Because as we know, the Lord uses our dreams as a communication channel. He uses it to tell us what is to come, sometimes what is happening in our lives, and sometimes he tells us about things that have already passed. So our dreams are extremely important. And I believe that nakedness is one of the signs in a dream that needs our attention okay so today i'm going to help you understand or uncover its meaning through scripture so nakedness can imply a few things and i want to give you those few things just now and let me just make it clear that this is not to say that nakedness only means all that i will discuss in this video because maybe someone else will get an additional revelation however through scripture and with the leading of the Holy Spirit and his wisdom you're going to understand basic and of course important meanings and implications of seeing yourself naked in a dream let's go now nakedness is spoken of as early as in the book of Genesis let us recall what happened in the Garden of Eden. The Bible tells us that Adam and Eve were in there. They had this amazing fellowship with the Lord. And the word tells us expressly that they were naked, but were not ashamed. So I hope those of you who believe that nakedness solely means to be ashamed, I hope you're listening keenly. The Bible says, that they were naked, but they were not ashamed. However, there was a turn of events. They sinned before God, which means that they disobeyed his instructions. And once they became aware of their sin, the Bible says they hid themselves. In fact, it says they knew that they were naked. And as a result, they resorted to hiding themselves from the presence of God. God, through his mercy, did cover their nakedness with something permanent as opposed to the fig leaves that they had resorted to. But let's understand what this nakedness actually implies. So when they were not in sin, nakedness was not an issue to them. Therefore, the idea that nakedness means shame is not necessarily true because we saw where Adam and Eve were actually naked as a couple, but at first they were not ashamed. Shame did not come until they sinned before the living God. So what does that mean? It means that nakedness in scripture, it can imply the following. I want you to put them in the comments. The first thing exposure when God shows you that you are naked in your dreams he's telling you that you're being exposed so please put exposure in the comments the second thing that nakedness implies is vulnerability when Adam and Eve sinned before the living God and became aware of their disobedience they were extremely vulnerable in his presence vulnerable in that garden it was as though this glory of protection, this ambiance of protection had left. And so they were exposed, vulnerable. And guess what? Now that they have sinned, they were ashamed. When there was no sin or disobedience, they had no reason to be ashamed. But the moment sin came into the picture, shame came so 
we have to look at the context of our dreams whenever we see nakedness in order to understand which of these elements or nature applies to its interpretation. So whenever you see yourself naked in a dream, try to capture the setting of the dream. Try to remember conversations that were had. Try to remember what you were doing, where you were going. Those things are important in understanding what interpretation applies to you. So, so far we have, based on the example given in the Garden of Eden through the life of Adam and Eve, we have come to the conclusion that nakedness suggests vulnerability, exposure, and also shame when sin is in our lives. Now, the other thing I want us to look at is given through the example of Noah. The Bible says that there was a time when Noah had reaped grapes from his vineyard. And of course, grapes are used to make wine. So he made wine and he drunk from his wine and he got drunk. He was highly intoxicated. And the Bible says that when he got intoxicated, he was naked. Now, the word of God says that when Noah was naked... His sons came in and we saw where the first one, uh, he literally went out and he told the other two about his father's nakedness. Amen. What does this nakedness mean? What exactly does this nakedness imply and what was there to talk about when it comes to nakedness? Okay. So again, the Bible is a spiritual book that has all these mysteries and all these hidden meanings. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in because not everything in scripture ought to be interpreted on a literal level. So let's look at it. Noah was naked. He was highly intoxicated. His sons had to come and cover his nakedness. What was so wrong or bad about the revealing of his nakedness that would have caused him to pronounce curse, a curse upon his own son. Watch this. In that context, we get to understand that nakedness, when it's seen by others, it suggests having your weakness, your carnal weakness on public display. So that area of your life in which you are struggling that carnality, that thing that you have not yet crushed, you have not yet overcome. It's still a monster in your life. It's carnal, but you're still struggling to get over it. You're not necessarily proud of it, but it's still there. It is something to be placed on the altar. Last night we talked about, you know, sacrificing at the altar. And we say when it comes to going to an altar, an altar is a place where something has to die. And we talk about bringing those things that are alive in our lives at the altar, allowing them to die. Okay. Noah's weakness was exposed, was on public display when he became naked. So when you see yourself naked in a dream, it might not necessarily mean that someone is going to literally remove your clothes from you. But just perhaps the Lord is saying to you, watch out because a time is coming when people around you will become aware of your weakness, your fleshly weakness. Okay. As a matter of fact, let me use another scripture to kind of back up this one. There was a time when the Lord was giving some instructions to his servant Moses as it pertained to tabernacle or temple rituals. One of the things that he said, especially in this particular book, the book of Exodus, is this. Exodus 20, he said in verse 26, And you must not go up to my altar on steps lest your nakedness be exposed on it. There again, the word nakedness is used. What exactly does it mean? 
The Lord says to the priests, when you're going to my altar, do not put any steps there. Because if you put steps, then I'm going to see your nakedness. What's the nakedness of the priests? The nakedness of the priests is really their, their flesh. Their flesh being exposed. So I want you to understand that even after this time, they had incorporated in their rituals and in the, the attire that came with the priests as they prepared for ceremonies the putting on of linen underneath pants under their their robes or whatever to cover their skins so then the idea of showing one's nakedness even in this context when he said do not go on my altar on steps is that he doesn't want to see your flesh the spirit of god does not want to see you okay so literally he doesn't want to see skin, but in the spirit, what he means is he doesn't want to see any part of you. It's not about you. This whole ceremony that you're about to partake in has nothing to do with you. It's for me. It's for my glory. Get your flesh out of it. Get your weakness out of it. The less of you that I see, then the more of me that can be on display and that can be magnified. It's time for you to decrease so that I can increase. So when you talk about nakedness, you're talking about putting one's weakness, carnal weakness on display. Or being in a position or situation where something that was once hid or secret is now revealed. Everybody sees it. Everybody becomes aware of it. Okay? Now, let us look for a moment on Revelation 3 verse 18. It reads thus. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness. In this particular scripture, We see a direct relationship between nakedness and sin. There is a, another scripture that's linked to this that says the righteous is covered in fine linen. While those who are walking in disobedience, their nakedness is shown. Whenever there is the presence of sin, sin, it doesn't have to be sexual. Noah's sin was not sexual, yet he was naked. Whenever there is the presence of sin in our lives, it means that we are exposed, we are vulnerable spiritually. And that's a dangerous reality to be in. Hallelujah. Whenever we are naked, we ought to question our covering in the spirit. Whether or not we are still covered by Adonai through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, just to confirm what I said earlier about nakedness speaking to our carnality or weaknesses, those things that we still need to crush or thresh on the threshing floor. Let's read what Nahum 3 verse 5 says. It says, I will lift up your skirts over your face and show to the nations your nakedness. I will show them your weak spot. I will show them what makes you vulnerable. I will show them the way to come into you to defile you. So I will show them your weak spot. Those are just my notes. The scripture it says itself says, I will lift up your skirts over your face and show to the nations your nakedness. God was speaking to his people, Israel. What exactly was he saying to Israel? He was saying to Israel, look, you are a glorious nation in the eyes of others because I have made you such. I've beautified you. 
you have these beautiful cities you lack not riches you have gold you have everything at your disposal everything you need you are above you are head among the nations you are above you are on the top but because you are disobedient disobeying me hallelujah here's what i'm going to do i'm going to allow those other nations that think you are so perfect and as and they feel as though you cannot be overthrown you cannot be moved i'm going to show them who you really are i'm going to give them the privilege of seeing some of the details of what's going on inside here they're gonna see who you really are without me they're gonna see that in truth and in fact you're just like them except i am with you you are weak you're not strong except i beautify you you are just like them except i anoint you you will not excel. I'm going to make them see your flaws. I'm going to make them see your weakness. I'm going to make them see what makes you just like them without me. So anytime you see nakedness in dream, it's telling of a weak spot in your life that is about to be seen by others or is already being seen. It's speaking of something in your life that's making you vulnerable. And it's also speaking of something wanting to come in to defile you. Remember nakedness. See the nakedness of a woman or a man. The moment some people see someone's nakedness, they think sex. Amen? Amen. So speaking of that, let's turn to Leviticus 18 and let's look at 18 to 20. Hallelujah. Leviticus 18, 18 to 20. Now, in these scriptures, certain commandments were given under the subject of sexual activities, sexual sins, and sexual requirements. Amen? I just wanted to read for you two verses. Do not take your wife's sister as a rival wife and have sexual relations relations with her while your wife is living. Uh, let's go down to 19. Do not approach a woman to have sexual relations during the uncleanness of her monthly period. Do not have sexual relationships with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. Um, the word nakedness is actually used in this chapter i don't want to read the entire thing but you will get to understand that there is an aspect of nakedness that sometimes speak to sexual gratification sexual exposure to sin hallelujah so seeing yourself being naked in a dream can actually mean one of these things or many of these things. Let's go over what we said they can suggest. Vulnerability, being exposed, being uncovered in terms of spiritual covering, spiritual protection, being in that spiritual safety net that we all ought to desire to be in. Nakedness speaks of one's weaknesses. It allows people to see we for who we are. 
I like the example of Noah being drunk and being naked because how many of you know that if you want someone to tell you what is in their heart, you get them drunk and you'll hear everything come out of them. Have you ever been around a drunk person? Like when we were in the world, many of us, you have experienced being around someone who was drunk. And when that person was drunk, they spilled the tea. They, they spoke everything. When one is intoxicated, one is naked. Because during that time of being highly drunk, there is no pretense. You're seeing what is truly there and you're hearing from that person what is really in their hearts. So nakedness speaks of the revealing or display of our weaknesses, our fleshly weaknesses and the things that gratify us carnally. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So these are just some of the things that nakedness actually means. The last example I used was from Leviticus. Hallelujah. We'll see the Lord talking about not looking at the nakedness of X person or this family member, etc. He's talking about not wanting to be gratified sexually by such one. So sexual sins are sometimes depicted in our dreams through nakedness. Depending on who you are and what's going on in your life, you will know which of these interpretations is applicable. Again, maybe someone else will have another interpretation or something in addition to what I have said. But I hope that the scriptures I've used, the examples I've given, have helped to clarify for you what the Lord means by showing you in a dream that you are naked or by showing you your brother naked, your sister naked, your mom naked, your aunt naked. I hope you'll get to understand better exactly what is being communicated in those instances. Now we still need worshipers and a keyboardist for Queens, New York. I'm going to ask that if you are a worshiper you have experience in leading a congregation in praise and worship hallelujah if you know you have been anointed in that area please reach out by visiting my website shadeenanglin.org and scrolling toward the bottom where you'll see a contact form send your information there tell me i am in queens i'm a worshiper or i am in queens and i'm a keyboardist if you see this days after, it doesn't mean that I found someone. So don't pay attention to the date. Whenever you see this little video and you listen to it to the end, where you're now hearing me say, we need worshipers and a keyboardist in Queens. I need you to reach out by going to my website and all other information that you might need pertaining to the ministry can be found there. Again, it's S H A D E E N A N G L I N dot O R G. Please remember to be on the lookout for scammers using my name to solicit information and monies from people Please do not respond to their friend requests. Be on the alert. I love you, everyone. We will talk. Remember that the weekly broadcasts are streamed on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday at 8.30 p.m. New York time. Be sure to turn on your notification bells and hit that follow button. Thank you very much for staying with me and um, for all the comments and the shares so that other people can benefit. Blessings.